Hello, my Grots and Gits. Welcome back to Happy Corrupt Wargaming. We are going to close out the new Cadex Blood Angels, at least for the preview stuff. Once we get our hands on some of the models and we actually start uh, getting to play it a little bit more, we know our actual points. I am going to be coming out with a lot of strategies and tactics for how to actually build this out. But for right now, while we don't know the real points and we just have to go off of what is in the Codex, which I am just praying is not real. <laughs> We are doing the best that we can for right now. So this is going to be talking about Lost Brethren, which is the Death Company uh, detachment. And I have one question. Who the hell thought that this was a good idea? Um, <laughs> a Death Company detachment made a lot of sense, but who thought that this was good? Anyway, let's break it down. This is the last one. You guys know the gig. As of right now, we are doing these videos to go through the new detachment. We're going to illuminate specific combinations and playstyle of the detachment. We're going to break down limitations, give you a starting point, and I'm going to give you a list example of where you can get started with this new detachment. If you are a Blood Angel fan, if you are a Warhammer fan, make sure you jump in the Happy Kruppin Wargaming Discord, where we are actually getting ready to start hosting our next TTS League, where we're doing a five-week tournament. It's going to be done through the TTS program. Uh, it's only available to members, so if you're a YouTube member or a coffee member, make sure you link your account to the Discord so that you can get access uh, and you can uh, sign up for the BCP link. And we're going to have a blast having a five-week tournament where you're going to get matched up with players across the world to stretch your Warhammer skills to the extreme. Anyway, let's get into the Lost Brethren. All right, so similarities and differences from Lost Brethren to what we are we were used to. The detachment rule is going to be death company units under starting strength. Oh, uh, you know what? Before I even do this, let me just say something, guys. This detachment blows. This is awful. It's really, really bad. It might be the worst detachment that Games Workshop has made outside of the Null Maidens. Uh, the Null Maiden for Custodians still takes the cake. It is still by far the worst rule set that Games Workshop has ever made for anything. You can include Lord of the Rings. You can include Old World. You can include AO. It doesn't matter. That's the worst thing they've ever produced. This is the second. This pretty much just sucks. Anyway, let's break it down. So, Death Company units under starting strength reroll wound rolls of one, and you get full wound rerolls when you're under half starting strength. And Death Company Marines and Death Company Marines with bolt rifles gain the battle line keyword, or not keyword, a uh, battle line roll. So, why is this so terrible? This is a rule that has shown up in Warhammer a bunch. It's shown up all over the places for the the reroll or, or the reroll wound rolls of one when you're under starting strength. Full re wound rerolls when you're under half starting strength. This has shown up on Terminators all over the place. It has shown up here. It's shown up in a bunch of different spots. And guess what? It has sucked awfully in every single place that it's ever shown up. It is always terrible. The only way you're ever going to get to benefit from it is if your unit is under starting strength, which means your opponent is not going to be able to wipe your squad. Maybe in a Terminator that makes sense, but in a five man, you know, two wound Marine squad, anytime they activate at all, they're going to kill that squad. If they're trying to go into a 10-man squad, all they got to do is only kill five, and then you have five left, and you still only get to reroll wound rolls of one. Meanwhile, half your squad is gone, and you're not hitting any harder. You're still just worse. In order to get to a full wound reroll, you have to be under half starting strength, which means if it's a five-man, you only get two models left. If it's a 10-man, you only have four models left. This detachment rule sucks, and it only applies to Death Company units which we're going to get into it, but the death company units also suck. All of that out of the way, we're going to do our best to try to figure out how to make this work. So we're not going to be, be bitching and moaning the entire video, although there might be a little bit of that. It's going to be all in good fun. So here's the deal. That is what we get. Now, before I start anything else, I can't figure out why you would take this detachment. Why wouldn't you just take an assault intercessor for less points? And they already have a better rule because they already reroll wound rolls of one and they get full wound rolls on objectives so like if you really like death company just paint assault intercessors black and use them in liberated assault group you're gonna have a lot more fun and it's gonna be a lot better um so they do have actually pretty good stratagems so the stratagems in this attachment are pretty dang solid they have god awful enhancements one is okay um so yeah basically uh if you want to play this detachment i would just play um <laughs> liberator assault group or literary assault for, yeah liber liberator assault group and i would just paint my assault intercessors black and pretend they're dc because you're gonna have a much more fun game let's talk about the enhancements the enhancements only go on death company characters the first one is actually pretty dang good it's a pretty solid enhancement and i i, I like it a lot sanguinius's gay grace once per battle your character can fight again if it is within engagement range of three or more enemy models this can be good um, it doesn't say that you fight again at the end of the fight phase or anything like that. That means that there are actual real uses for this enhancement. Let's say 
that you activate and your opponent decides to activate with another unit in another combat and you still have a unit to kill, you can activate again. And you can do this with your Death Company Captain, um, which could be quite good. So it's definitely useful. It has a place. There, I said it. It has a place. And um, then you have Blood Shard. Stand up on a 2 plus once per game at the end of the phase. You stand up with three wounds. So this is a enhancement that is pretty good. We've seen it in other detachments, like the Eldari have it with the Phoenix Gem. You've seen um, other units have it, so like Brother Captain Stern has it. It's always a pretty solidly decent ability. Unfortunately, you can't put it on anything that has a loan up. You can't put it on anything that would actually want it, seeing as all of the Death Company characters only get benefits when they're attached to their units. So it's like the unit is going to die, and then you just have a Captain stand up or a Chaplain stand up by himself on um, three wounds instead of full wounds like everyone else. It's just like a worse version of a good rule that works on specific units that you can't put it on those units. So it sucks. To slay the War Master, this is actually kind of interesting. I'll get, give it credit. It's actually kind of interesting. Once per game, start the fight phase, roll 66. Every four up is a mortal wound on one character model in a character unit. Now this could actually be cool, to be fair, because you utilize this, you cause three mortal wounds to a four wound character, and then you go, okay, cool. It's worth my time to spend one CP on precisioning it out because I have a good possibility of actually killing this character. So fair play. It's not awful. It better be worth like five points because it is once per game. Um, it does get a little bit better. You get to add two to the roll. If, uh, wait, no, that's, um, sorry. That was the, that was the different one. Uh, yeah, it, you get to add two to the roll if you are against the warlord. So that is like, you know, wait, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm thinking about just the death company captain in general. Forgive me. So this just sucks. Uh, but you can you maybe have fun with it. Whatever. I'm moving on. Vengeful Onslaught. If the bearer is destroyed until the end of the next turn, your unit gets plus one to hit. So it's not even your unit gets plus one to hit anymore. It's still the end of the next turn. Oh, and by the way, all Death Company units reroll hit rolls innately. So this is pointless and bad. All right, bad enhancements. So let's move on. Here we go, strats. All right, glorious sacrifice. When your unit is killed, the objective they were on is now sticky. And does this mean that an OC unit can stick an objective? Unlikely. Let me read the actual wording to you so that we can all get it together. So here is the actual wording on Glorious Sacrifice. Any phase, one Death Company unit from your army that was just destroyed while it was within range of an objective marker you control, you can use this stratagem on that unit even though it was just destroyed. That objective marker now remains under your control even if you have no models within range of it until your opponent controls it at the start or end of any turn. The problem here is the word remains. It doesn't say that unit counts as being under, which means that you will have to have actually OC. So you can't have an OC zero unit of death company, which, you know, is the whole army, <laughs> and they die and then you can stick to it. No, you actually have to have OC on it, which means they have to be within 12 or have a chaplain with them if it's going to be a death company unit that has it. And you can only use it on death company. You can't use it on any squad, which... So it's like, it's a bad, it's a bad stratagem that you can potentially make work. Now. Let's talk about the next one. The next one is Armor Contempt. Armor Contempt's great. Everyone loves it. Furious Onslaught. Fight phase. Gain a D3 plus 3 inch pylon on your unit or a 6 inch if you're within 12 of Chaplain. This is actually a very good stratagem. This is very good and it will allow you to make certain charges that will give you pylons into units that your opponent wasn't expecting. So this is actually really, really good. I love this stratagem. I just desperately wish it was in a different uh, detachment. You can use this to charge a closer unit and move block yourself with your own models so that you can't get base to base and then use your pylon to tag a different unit. And that means you can tag multiple units to cause real big problems against like enemy gun lines and things like that. So I actually love this stratagem. There's no sarcasm here. This is this actually rocks. Let's look at the other three strats. Lost to Rage. This is in the fight phase. Your DC unit gains plus one strength, attack, and AP on their melee weapons and hazardous. You don't gain hazardous if you're within a tw within 12 inches of a chaplain. The problem with this stratagem, uh, because there's so many problems with everything in this detachment, is you can only use this on a death company unit from your army that is below starting strength. So you can only use this on a unit that is already below starting strength, which means you can't use the hazardous to get you below starting strength. So there's no way to even use your own army to actually rock your own ability. You're just going to be praying and hoping that one of your plasma pistols overcharges just so you can use your rule. You're never going to get to use your rule. Oh my god, I hate this detachment with a, with a passion. Final Retribution. Fight on death on a 4-up at plus 1 within 12 inches of chaplain. Fight on death is great. 1 CP for a, most likely a 3-up uh, fight on death is actually very, very good. 
Once again, though, you know, in order to use your stratagems, you, you're, you're forced to take an extra character along just to be able to use your stratagems to be reasonable. And then we have Wrathful Rampage. Advance and charge if um, below starting strength. I can't believe they have this on, they have this little uh, keyword on here as well. Um, no, I'm sorry. I wrote that in wrong. That got copied and pasted wrong. So you're, if you're, uh... yeah, there we go. All right. So until the end of the turn, your unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which it advanced. If your unit is within 12 inches, of, or of one or more friendly chaplain models, or it is with it below starting its strength, its starting strength until the end of the turn, your unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge in a turn in which it advanced. So if you jump through the hoops, if you have a chaplain or if you're already below starting strength, you can also shoot your pistols when you advance. My God, this is such a bad stratagem. Um, I mean, it's all right. It's not a bad stratagem. It's a bad detachment. Advancing charge is always very useful. It's good to be able to put that on your death company units. So maybe that death company Brutalis, which is a terrible model, might actually make it into combat. Um, God, I wish I liked this. The, the idea of this detachment was such a good idea, but the death company, ugh, it's, it, they just did such a bad job. All right, let's move on. All right. What I want to do is I just want to show you real quick, just to dissuade you from taking this detachment, is an Assault Intercessor versus a Death Company. Now, to be fair, I did add a death, an Assault Intercessor in the Liberator Assault group, but I promise I'll paint their armor black for you so it looks like it's Death Company. So if we have this Assault Intercessor squad and we're going into just Marine bodies, the Power Fist on the Sergeant, they're going to get four attacks with it. It's going to cause 3.46 damage into Marine bodies, so they're going to kill one and a half Marines. Maybe two Marines, maybe, right, just, just depending on how dice rolls. And then the guys with the chain swords are going to cause an extra 5.93 damage into Marine bodies, which is going to equal two Marines or maybe closer to three. It is very close to being three on average. So you're going to get anywhere between three and a half to four and a half Marines that are going to die here from a from a squad of assault intercessors in the Liberator Assault Group. Now, what does a, squ a five man squad of Death Company Marines do? Well, you're going to have the Power Fist. That's going to come in, and it's going to deal 2.96 damage into Marine bodies. You're not going to have sustained hits on it because you're at full starting strength, <laughs> which is going to kill one Marine. Your Eviscerator is going to deal 2.67 damage, which is going to equal one dead Marine. Your Chain Swords are going to cause 2.67 damage, and you're not re-rolling wound rolls because you're not under starting strength, and you're not getting sustained hits because you're not under starting strength. And I don't know how you're going to get under starting strength because nothing in the game is going to struggle to kill a five-man unit of marines if they're trying to kill them death company gets slightly better when one dies which is actually important because they get to re-roll hit rolls so then they can actually start stopping up so i was being a little hyperbolic there they do get better when one of them dies and they get much better when three of them die i just can't figure out how you're ever gonna just have two marines from a five-man marine squad alive it's just it's just not gonna happen outside of like indirect fire that just fails to kill the whole squad um that being said they're also going to be oc zero they can't do they can't hold primary they can't do actions for you it's going to require an extra 60 point tax to have a chaplain nearby them just to be able to functionally play the game. Their base points is 90 points and assault intercessors are 75. Guys, don't take Death Company Marines. The only way you can take them is if you're taking them in 10 mans. And I'm going to show you how to do that because I believe in trying to make this work, even though it doesn't. Let's talk about some of the characters and the Death Company units that are super hard to actually fit into the detachment, even though they should be taken all the time. Let's talk about Astroth. Astroth is actually pretty darn cool. First off, he's got one of the sickest models that have ever been, ever been released. I love this model. Holy crap, it is gorgeous. He is very expensive in the Codex. He's 105 points. And yes, once again, yes, I know everyone's going to say yes, but his points will be less. We don't actually know that. We can assume that, but we don't actually know that. Um, his buff is admittedly pretty dang good. So every time you charge, you will get devastating wounds on the unit. That's sick. And, you know, fight on death on a four up, which is also pretty cool. And it stacks with a uh, death company. Oh, wait, he can only lead jump pack death company who, uh, you know, they don't get the sustained hits when they're wounded. Hmm. Damn. Anyway, <laughs> um, he really needs to be attached to a 10 man for real viability because what you really want is this squad to get full wound rerolls so you could really proc those devastating wounds. That being said, he is going to have to be attached to a 10 man. And since it's 11 models, it's still going to have to go all the way down to five man before it can actually start to, you know, get full wound rerolls, which totally sucks. So it's minimum a 334, 35 point investment for a admittedly decent, decent hitly hitting unit, assuming you're still alive and you've only lost slightly under half of the unit. Man, this is like a this is like a unit that is good on a Tuesday as long as you had fish for dinner last night. 
and you played Magic the Gathering the morning before, but you also had to have had a really good poop. Like, if you hadn't had all those things, this unit sucks. So that, that's just how it is. The Death Company Dreadnought is unbelievably bad. It is shockingly bad for 220 points. Its melee profile is, is just straight up worse than it used to be. Okay. It did gain a few more wounds. That's nice. It gained one point of toughness, which is also nice. Uh, its ability, it no longer has the infinite fight hack. Now its ability is it gets to blood surge once. Blood surge once in the turn. This just, this is so bad. This is so bad. All your opponent has to do is just not shoot him. And then he's still moving eight. He doesn't have bonuses to charge anymore. And he's 220 points. The assumption is that he's going to come out pointed at the same roughly as a Brutalis, and Brutalis is already suck. So, congratulations, you have an OC0 Brutalis. Okay, Death Company Marines with Bolt Rifles. This is the most hilarious unit that I can possibly think of. Uh, <laughs> their special ability is they get to, you know, re-roll hit rolls with melee weapons. Their melee weapons are close combat weapons, guys. Um, wow, that's good. Okay, to be fair, they also get to heroically intervene, you know, for that melee close combat weapon free rolling and fire Overwatch with uh, their bolt rifles for free. Like, wow. You can you can Overwatch with your bolt rifles for free, guys. You're never going to take Death Company Marines with bolt rifles. I don't even understand why that why that unit exists. Uh, just and guys, this is the competitive salty bear and me coming out right here. This is horribly written uh, gameplay. All right. This detachment does not delete units. This detachment does not kill anything. It does have access to advance and charge, which forces your opponent to respect your threat ranges. That's great. Fight on death is actually very nice. Non-sarcastically, fight on death is very, very nice. Fight on death is actually the only way you're probably ever really going to be able to proc your special ability. So when you have fight on death, what will happen is your opponent is going to say, well, I don't know, charge your death company marines on foot. And let's say they wipe the entire squad. And let's say that you're also lucky enough to be within 12 inches of a chaplain so that you fight on death on three ups. Well, what's going to happen then is that you're going to be able to fish for the sustain hits too with your power fist, which is awesome. And you're also going to get to reroll wound rolls. So they will start punching up pretty well with the use of that strategy. So that's not a bad thing to be able to do with your foot company death marines. Jump pack death marines, you'll at least get to reroll wound rolls if you're fighting on death, but you have no guarantee that your power fist guys or your eviscerator guys are going to be the ones who actually get to fight on death because it's only on a three plus if you're within range of a chaplain or a four plus if you're not. Meaning maybe you're only rerolling hit rolls with your, your maybe you're only going to be proccing your abilities on chain swords. You don't know. This blows. All right. If you wish to take advantage of the detachment rule, um, basically, here's the deal, guys. You're going to have to take 10 mans, and 10 mans are freaking expensive way more expensive than they should be. A death company squad is going to have like two eviscerators and uh, uh, I th think only one power fist, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the jump pack, um, the jump pack Marines will have three power fists and two eviscerators, which is really nice. But the ones on foot, I'm pretty sure is only one power fist, uh, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. And I'm going to look at that uh, data card once again right now, just to make sure I am not fooling you here. All right, let me just pull this up. Death company Marines, that's with jump packs. Normal death company Marines. All right, let's read this here. Models, one model's heavy bolt pistol can be replaced, blah, blah, blah. For every five models in this unit, one model's Astartes Chainsword can be replaced with an Eviscerator. And then one model's Astartes Chainsword can be replaced with a Power Fist or a Thunder Hammer. Great. All right, so you're going to get one Power Fist and you're going to get two Eviscerators in a squad of Death Company Marines on foot. Okay, this is awful. It's just it's just terrible. All right, let's look at uh, units that love this detachment. Um, basically, no one loves it because this detachment is awful. The Marte Squad perhaps likes it. Um, Morate squad, maybe one of them gets killed and then suddenly they get to reroll wound rolls of one with your jump assault and with your jump assault death company Marines. Um, Astroth maybe likes it, but that's in a place where, you know, you're not trying to win the game anyway. Oh, and just as an aside, your rhinos are completely useless now because all death company Marines now have the tactics tacticus keyword, which means you can only go in pulsers. So your 10 man squads, um, can't take transports unless you want to shell out for the land raider redeemer. Have I mentioned I hate this detachment? All right, let's talk about a build that you could potentially do it. And I did do my best to make a build that would actually work. So here's what we got. We got Sanguinar, we got Mephiston, we've got a Death Company Captain with Sanguinius's Grace because that is an objectively straight up good uh, rule um, or good enhancement that will potentially allow him to fight first or fight twice on the turn that he's going to be activating his, uh, wait, he doesn't have a finest hour. This is Death Company Captain. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. Chaplain with a uh, blood shard. So then we have a chaplain who's going to take the blood shard because why not? We've got points left over and this detachment sucks anyway. Why not take the, why not take a, um, you know, a, a bad enhancement? 
You got Lamorte at 400 points. You've got to run two 10-man Death Company Marines. This is 380 points. You've got one 10-man Death Company with Jump Pack Marines, which is 230 points for a unit of uh, Jump Assault Intercessors who don't cause mortals. And they will be running with Lamartes. This is going to be your best unit in the in the detachment. And straight up, I'm being a little bit, you know, sarcastic and being a little flippant here. This unit is actually probably still pretty good because they're going to get lethal hits from Lamartes. They're going to get minus one damage from Lamartes. This unit's actually probably pretty reasonable. Um, but I would not take a 10-man without Lamartes. I would not take a 10-man with uh, uh, Astaroth because they're just going to die like anything else. And you're not going to, you're either not going to kill enough to proc the ability or you're going to wipe them, which means that the uh, detachment's ability doesn't kick in. Then you're going to take two five-man JPI, one five-man of scouts, two lancers. These lancers are um, necessary to kill anything. And then one land raider redeemer. The best parts of this army are the armies that don't benefit from the detachment rule because the detachment rule is garbage. And GW, you made a terrible codex. With that, I'm going to end it right here. And I'll be back with a more serious video for you guys tomorrow. Peace out and have an amazing freaking day.